Welcome to the TX2 Rockchip 3229 TV box. Sit back, relax, and let's take a look at this device and what it can do. The TX2 features the Rockchip 3229 processor, which was released a couple of years ago now. But since then, we've seen free source code releases by Rockchip, so we've now on to Marshmallow 6.0.1, which is really impressive for such a cheap processor. The TX2 is a cheap box itself. At only £23 is really impressive, considering it's got 2GB of RAM. DDR3 RAM, that is. It also comes with 16GB of on-board on memory. Obviously some of that is taken up by the operating system, but still for such a cheap box that's a lot of memory for your money. The box is £23, what do you expect? I certainly don't expect that much, so anyway let's dive in and let's see what this box can do. So welcome to the TX2's launcher. Now I really like this launcher, it's nice and clean, it's very very simple. And it looks nice as well, very, well, maybe modern, not so modern. I've seen launchers like this from way back from 2013-2014 but you know it's quite simple it's quite to the point really I do like it when they include these memory memory cleaners and this happens to have one and I do enjoy it when firmware includes those into the launches as you can see we've got Cody on our left hand side we've got our app section we can go in there and have a look for our apps as you probably noticed it's a little bit sluggish when you go in through the menu now that's probably just the launcher, it's probably not the actual operating system, but there's no real way to tell. If we're going to settings, there's two different settings set up. So we've got this one which is probably built into the firmware and you can manage your files and etc through that storage and they've spelt storage wrong, but never mind. You can access network in there and you can turn it on, turn it off. You've also got your regular sort of settings section when you go into here go down here and select settings and it brings up the regular Android settings section. Now if we could go to about device it tells us it's the TX2 and it's running Android 6.0.1 with a kernel 3.10. That's quite an old kernel so I'd like to see in the future maybe a newer version, a newer kernel implemented but probably won't see that because that's just the way these work. Now if we go into maybe, let's launch Kodi, let's see how well that launches and let's see how well it runs. Now this is obviously capable of running Kodi Krypton, which is good to see. And this is just a standard launcher. And you don't get anything pre-installed, I don't think, unless I installed it. I can't quite remember it. I got this box a few days ago and I've been playing around with it since then. So I've probably changed it since recording since um, I started recording this video. If we go into system information, we can tell that it's got two gig of um, RAM and, this, and the CPU is not under that much load when we're actually running it. So it's good to see that. And going through the menus, it's quite nice and smooth as I'd expect. And I'd imagine playing most video files, you shouldn't have too much of an issue. Remember this box is 23 pounds, so don't expect anything amazing. It's capable of 4K, but I don't think this is HDMI 2.0, so you're not going to get a very good 4K experience. Obviously, if you own a 4K TV, you'd be buying a high-end box anyway, not a cheap one like this. But there we go, that's Cody. If we come out there, let's see how quickly it closes, and yeah, it's pretty quick. Let's move on now, and let's have a look. That's maybe let's open up the Play Store. Let's see how well this runs. Because as we know, I know, with my experience, sometimes the Play Store can be quite resource intensive. I'm not sure why that is. It should be pretty smooth, but there we go. That's just the way it is. And yeah, it's quite nice and smooth. We can certainly go through and download everything. And I have prepared a game, uh, Modern Warfare, to actually run. I actually played this uh, um, yesterday, I think it was, and it ran really well. Unfortunately, it doesn't recognize my joypad. I'm not sure whether that's the game or it's the firmware um, confusing itself, but yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't recognize the Xbox 360 controller I've got. Um, it's an unofficial controller, so maybe that's why it is. So I need to get hold of an official Xbox 360 controller to see if the app and the game actually recognizes that or not. We can load up YouTube, let's go and play a video. 
So here we are, let's try and see how well it plays at a video. I'll just put my TV on mute so it doesn't interrupt with my song recording. And there was a problem trying to play it. There we go. That's probably just because YouTube's a bit of a pest now and again. Let's try another file. And there was a problem again. Um, right, so let's close down the app and let's see if we can fix this issue. Right. It's probably wanting to actually update this app anyway. That's probably be the issue there. But let's try again. No, we don't want to speak to use it. And there was a problem again. I'm going to come back to that and we're going to try and fix that issue. I do believe it's probably just trying to update itself. Yes, so the app for some reason didn't want to update itself using the Play Store. So I go into the Play Store and I find that the system actually doesn't recognize YouTube being installed for some reason. So I install YouTube and it's updated itself. And now, as you can see, it's working perfectly fine. Everything's running nice and smooth, I'd expect. It's a little bit laggy on YouTube, but, you know, I always find YouTube can be sometimes on any device, really. So, yeah, it's doing its job perfectly fine. As you can see, nice and smooth video playback. We can move to a different one just here. I mean, I don't have the fastest internet. But, yeah, there we go. There's uh, Beeling GT1. I mean, yeah, good stuff. So YouTube works absolutely fine. Video playback, as you can see, is as you would expect. Let's move on now. Let's test that game I was talking about before. So this Modern Combat 1, just here. Now, like I said before, my, my controller doesn't work with it. I do have a, a Chinese version of it, so... Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to recognize the actual controller. But anyway, let's load this up and let's see how this runs. So here we are, here's Modern Combat loading up. And I'm going to have to struggle because I've got my mouse here. But <laughs> that's just what I'm going to have to do. So, so far, so good. I have played this game before on this box. And it is actually not bad. It actually is a little bit better than some of the higher end boxes I've used. Which is really strange don't know why that is skip this bit and as you can see i'm going to struggle here because i'm using them to do use the thing hopefully hopefully i can get hold of a of a xbox controller a proper one and it recognizes it graphically you know i think the system's turned itself down quite a bit you can see it's pixelated quite a little bit and you know this game is actually quite graphically good um here we go let's try, try and kill him oh there we go there we go oh there we go i'm dead um yeah it's a shame the controller doesn't work properly but as you can see that game actually runs really well and it's quite a graphically intense game um, i'm quite impressed by that Right, let's exit out of this game. Uh, so like I said before, the joypad doesn't isn't recognized by that game, but I did actually connect a keyboard just then to actually skip back to the main menu, and it did actually come up saying you've connected a joypad. Um, so it must just be because I'm using a cheap Chinese clone, Xbox 360. I'm sure it probably would work if you have an official one. Let's, um, no, we don't want to go into that. Let's go into and see how well some retro games play. Because, as you probably know, the MXQ project, we're all about our retro gaming. Um, let's see, PlayStation 1, obviously, let's try Crash Bandicoot. I, I've, I've played on this already, and I know it runs absolutely fine, but just for the purposes of showing you guys... I played through two levels of this and it was absolutely perfectly fine. 
I mean, it's, it's not perfect. Emulation never is, but it's nice and smooth, as I'd expect. Most hardware can run PlayStation 1 games like this. <laughs> Some other titles do struggle to run, but Crash Bandicoot, etc., you know, the popular ones, tend to run pretty well. And if you've been around our channel, you know we support retro gaming for all sorts of different hardware. I mean, we started this off with um, the MXQ box, the S805 one, and I mean, this that can run run um, emulation pretty well, and that's a much older processor. Right, let's go about come out with that one. No, let's not, do, let's not launch it again. Um, come back. Go and play N64. GoldenEye. Now, this is a particular hard game to emulate, especially on lower end hardware. And, yeah, it runs alright. I'll show you. I'll show you what it runs like. Actually runs a bit better than some of the Pyrant hardware, can you believe it? Takes a bit of time to actually load this actual first level. But once we're there... It's not bad. Oh, I there we go. Just a quick one there, I, I pressed the wrong button, but as you can see it ran pretty well. Um, I'll got the final game I'm going to show you is just an Android game, um, Destruction Derby. Um, it's quite an intensive game by all accounts. Um, it doesn't recognise joypad drivers unfortunately. I'll wait for this to load, I'll come back when it's done. Oh, here we go, no need to do that. As you can see, it's actually the menus even start, even struggling to actually play properly. Yeah, it's struggling. Frame rates will be absolutely rubbish. There we go. As you can see, yeah, it's very, really struggling to play this game properly. And I can't play it properly anyway because it's a touchscreen game. There we go. So that's that. As you can see, you know, it's it's for the money, I think it's decent. Unfortunately, there's this annoying issue with this menu bar that's not being active at all. I've, I've looked through the settings and I just can't find anything to actually change it. It's a shame because it's, that menu bar does come in useful. Maybe there's a setting somewhere I'm missing something, maybe. But apart from that, for what it is, it's pretty decent. I think there's a kernel issue somewhere when you try and shut down the box. Yeah, it doesn't always let you. It um, it just sort of reboots the box. I've, that's normally a kernel issue, and because it's using an older kernel, that might be the case just there. So I don't know. I don't. I'm just not hundred percent sure this firmware is finished, and it's you know it should have been released really. But um, apart from that, it's absolutely fine. Uh, most things play reasonably well. So thanks for watching, guys. The TX2 is certainly a good box for the money. Just those few niggling issues, such as a shutdown, it doesn't seem to work properly, it just reboots the box. As well as that, there's the menu bar. Can't seem to find it in settings. I'm sure I'm missing something somewhere. So if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give me a dislike. Don't forget to subscribe, and we shall see you on the next one.